Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. Now, recently, as far as I can tell, it's become a trend for people to make the claim that 9x19 is just as powerful as a 357 Magnum. A viewer sent me a link to a video where some people were trying to prove that hypothesis. I found their methods sloppy and their conclusions highly questionable. But their conclusion was that, at least under some circumstances, the 9 was just as powerful as the 357. Also recently I saw a video where some guy was talking about his five facts that all shooters know. And he said that all people who are serious about shooting and serious about self-defense know these five facts. One of which was that 9x19 is just as effective as 357 Magnum. Now he used the term effective, not powerful, but still. That and a few other things have led quite a few viewers to contact me and ask me to do a presentation comparing the 9 and the 357. Not necessarily the guns, but the calibers. So, here we are. So today I might shoot a couple of other handguns later, but for the most part we're going to compare this Breda 92FS caliber 9x19 with a 4 and 3 quarter inch barrel to this Ruger Security 6 357 Magnum with a 4 inch barrel. And we'll shoot a few different types of ammunition side by side, and let's see if we can shed any light on the question about their comparative power and effectiveness. Now we'll start with the mundane task of shooting past the chronograph, and we'll start with the 9mm. This is Remington Ultimate Defense 9x19 plus P with a 124 grain jacket at hollow point. Eleven forty six. Eleven thirty eight. Eleven thirty seven. And eleven twenty one. Now we'll try our three fifty seven Magnum. I've got this loaded with Remington Green and White Box 357 Magnum 125 grain semi jacket at hollow point. One grain difference in projectile weight, I think we can live with that. Also, remember the 9mm we were using was plus P and it was ultimate defense. That's pretty high up the food chain as 9mm ammo goes. By 357 Magnum standards, this green and white box stuff is kind of benign. So let's see how it does. Fourteen eighty six. Fourteen eighty six. Fourteen twenty three. And fourteen eighty seven. Now let's try a different type of ammo. Now we're back to our 9mm, now we have Hornady Critical Duty 9x19 plus P, but this has a 135 grain flex lock ballistic tip. Let's see how this does. 1048. 1057. 1037, 1056. Now let's see how that compares to the 357. Now we'll try our critical duty 357 Magnum 135 grain flex lock ballistic tip. So this should be a relatively fair comparison. 1245. 1246, 1254, 1254, and 1258. Now let's go crunch the numbers. Well, we crunched the numbers and here's the results. And what we see is that with our Remington Ultimate Defense 9x19 plus P, we get a mean velocity of 1,135 feet per second. But with our Remington Green and White Box 357 Magnum, we get a velocity of 1,470. That's 335 feet per second more. That's a lot more. Now with our critical duty ammunition, we see with the 9mm plus P, we get a velocity of 1,049. But with our 357 Magnum ammunition, we get a velocity of 1,250. That's still 201 feet per second more. A lot more. 
Although 9mm, depending on your barrel length and brand of ammunition and configuration, whether or not it's plus P, there's a wide range of velocities, and there's similarly a wide range of velocities with 357 Magnum ammunition, you're going to find that 357 Magnum is just more powerful than 9mm, usually by a wide margin. However, right about now is when someone says, what about compact guns? We've all heard that if you shoot a 357 Magnum in a revolver with a snub-nosed barrel, that you lose tremendous amounts of velocity and you end up with it not being any more powerful than a 38 Special Plus P. Well, two things to that. One, that's just not true. And two, we have a presentation specifically on that subject if you want to watch it. But just for today, we're in luck because I brought my Ruger SP-101 357 Magnum with a two and a quarter inch barrel. And I've got it loaded with the Remington Green and White Box 357 Magnum 125 grain semi-jacketed hollow points. I'll shoot this past the chronograph and we'll see how these numbers compare to these. So let's see what the chronograph tells us about the performance of our snub nose. 1271. 1303, 1296, and 1249. Now let's go crunch those numbers. So how'd we do with our SP-101? We got a mean velocity of 1,279. That's still 144 feet per second faster than the 9 millimeter, which was ultimate defense, plus P, and fired from a full-size barrel. Now you might ask, why did I not shoot the 9 millimeters through a compact pistol? Because it wasn't necessary to make the point I'm trying to make. And that is that 357 Magnum is a lot more powerful than 9 millimeter. However, these are just numbers. Power does not necessarily translate into effectiveness. Effectiveness has to do with bullet mass, bullet diameter, and some other things. Now for this comparison, we were comparing 135 grain bullets to 135, 125 to 125, so that was an even comparison. Also, in terms of the bullet diameter, now we call it 9 millimeter, but most 9 millimeter ammunition has a bullet diameter of .355 inches, as where 357 is .357. Two thousandths of an inch difference in diameter, that's not enough to make a difference. But in truly comparing the effectiveness, let's see if we can shoot some other targets that will give us some input on that. So let's shoot these $2 concrete blocks. I'll shoot the one on your left with the 9mm and the one on your right with the 357. Now I've got the 9 loaded with Remington green and white box 9x19 124 grain full metal jacket round nose. And I've got the 357 loaded with Remington green and white box 357 Magnum 125 grain semi jacketed hollow point. I couldn't find the Remington Green and White Box 357 with a full metal jacket round nose. But let's see how they compare. 1303. And now the 357. Let's take a closer look. So this is 14 shots with the 9mm, and this is 9 shots with the 357 Magnum. And remember with the 9mm we were using full metal jacket ammunition. That should have given it a little bit of an advantage in this situation. Now let's try shooting something else. Now let's shoot some evil jack-o'-lanterns. I'll go back 7 yards and I'll shoot the target on your left with the 9mm and the target on your right with the 357. But this time for the 9mm, I'm going to use Remington Golden Saber 9x19 plus P 124 grain jacketed hollow point. And for the 357, I'll still use the Remington Green and White Box 357 Magnum 125 grain semi jacketed hollow point.
Now, for those of you who haven't noticed, both of these were filled with orange soda. And did you notice that it seemed to take the 9mm a few shots to really do some damage? With the 357, it looked like it did a lot of damage with the first shot and then not much with the subsequent shots. That's because the first shot basically blew out the orange soda guts, and then the rest of the shots were shooting through a hollow pumpkin. So which of these is more effective for your Halloween pumpkin assassination missions? You be the judge. Now shooting cinder blocks and pumpkins is fun and it tells us what it tells us, but to me a definitive test is the meat target. Now for those who haven't seen it before, this is pork chop pectorals followed by pork ribs, watermelon lung tissue, more pork ribs on the back, covered with leather jacket skin, the lining of the jacket will act as rudimentary clothing, and behind that, as always, the high-tech fleece bullet stop. Now I'm going to go back seven yards and I'll shoot this with a nine millimeter. I'm going to shoot four shots. The first two will be the ultimate defense and the second two will be the golden saber. These are all nine by 19 plus P with 124 grain jacketed hollow points. So how'd we do? Well, where the 9mm rounds hit the ribs on the front, shattered them, pulverized our watermelon lung tissue, where the projectiles hit the ribs on the back, broke them, and all four projectiles were stopped by the leather jacket skin on the back of the target. So, 9mm effective, if you load it with the right ammo, yes. But let's make a new meat target, and we'll try this again with the 357 Magnum, and see if we can see any difference. Now with the 357 Magnum, I was again using the Remington green and white box 125 grain semi-jacketed hollow point. I only fired two rounds because from where I was standing, it looked like those two had done about as much damage as the four or nine millimeter rounds had. Now on the front, we see that where the bullets hit a rib broke them. But even though the bullet diameter is the same with the 357 as it is with the nine, essentially, the holes look a lot bigger. The two shots pulverized our watermelon lung tissue went through the ribs on the back, and again, both projectiles were stopped by the leather jacket skin on the back of the target. We also saw a great deal of expansion. Now let me show you a close-up of all the projectiles we shot. And here's all of our projectiles. Now with the Golden Saber 9mm ammo, as is typical, it lost its jacket. These Ultimate Defense stayed together and there's some really good expansion, but remember those are high-tech bullets. The 357 ammo, by comparison, is a very low-tech projectile, but we still see a great deal of expansion and equal penetration. And to me, anyway, it looked like the two rounds of 357 did about as much damage as the four rounds of 9mm. Now, in comparing the effectiveness of the 9 versus 357, there's one more thing I want to add, and we're not going to demonstrate this, I'm just going to say it. In deer hunting, I have shot, and I have seen shot, several deer with 9mm and 357 Magnum. And from where the deer is shot to where it becomes incapacitated, measured both in distance and time, is significantly less with the 357 than it is with the 9. And in doing necropsies on those animals, I see much bigger wound channels and much more extensive tissue damage with the 357 than I do with the 9. So put that together with everything we've seen here today and what can we take away from it. Well first, the idea that a 9mm is just as powerful as a 357 Magnum. No, it's not. I suppose if you made the absolutely best choice in handgun and best choice in ammunition for the 9 and compared that to a very poor choice in handgun and ammunition for the 357, you could get pretty close. But in any test that's in any way fair, the 357 Magnum is significantly more powerful than a 9. And as far as effectiveness goes, by anything I've ever seen in the field or anything I could demonstrate here today, the 357 Magnum is more effective anywhere from marginally to extensively. Now I am not saying that a 9mm is a poor handgun choice. For home defense, concealed carry, personal protection, anti-personnel purposes, the 9mm can be a great choice. And because a 9mm is almost always an autoloader, and a 357 Magnum is almost always a revolver, the 9 can give you the inherent advantages of an autoloader, such as greater magazine capacity, and that a lot of people can just reload an autoloader faster than they can a revolver. So the 9 can be a great choice, but as far as the idea that it's just as effective as a 357 Magnum, not by anything I can demonstrate. Which brings up the question, for those people asserting that it is, how did they come to that conclusion? And the answer is, I really don't know. But if I were to speculate, I think they are quoting studies that they've seen rather than talking about anything they personally experienced or put to the test. Now we have a very long-winded presentation on gunfight statistics and you can watch that. 
But to give you the very short version of it, a lot of the studies that people quote when they're talking about guns are fundamentally flawed, and some of them are agenda-driven. One example I like to make is there was a study about police shootings that inadvertently included when a police officer used his issue firearm to commit suicide. They counted that as a police shooting. You can see the flaw in a study like that. And because of that and many other things, I always put a lot more stock into things that I've personally seen and things that I can personally test than I do in things I read about. So all that having been said, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the 9mm vs. 357 video.